Welcome to Intersections, where faith, ideas, and life meet. Today we're talking about miracles. Does God really intervene in life in miraculous ways? That's our question. Lee, have you ever really seen a miracle? You know, Carla, in about over 20 years of working in the hospital setting, miracles are rare in terms of the classic definition where people are hoping for an instant healing. But there are about three situations that I, I can't really explain. Could you tell us about one of them? Well, one of them, I remember, um, this is some years back now, there's this man with a brain tumor, and the prognosis was very grim. Mm -hmm. And he was ready to go out and to serve God in another country somewhere. I'm trying to remember the details, but he was all set to go. And then he had some headaches, and after they did the scan, there's a malignant tumor. And I remember going up with my good friend, Pastor Randy Roberts. We went up and we anointed him. And you know, several days later, um, I said to Randy, what happened to this gentleman? He said, there's no sign of the tumor. Hmm. Can't explain that. Mm -hmm. But most situations where people expect miracles, mm -hmm. I don't see too many where God now, intervenes like do that. You, do you, mm. Did you all consider that to be a miracle? Yeah, we did. Um, we, we didn't go around talking about it, but both Randy and I kind of talked together and said, we can't explain that one. But and then we prayed, so what do we expect? Well, and what, what <laughs> kind of told you that it was a miracle? What, how is it that you decided it was a miracle and not, say, the, yeah. the medication or the treatment or something like that? Well, I don't know much about the chemistry of malignant tumors. But my understanding is when it's beyond stage one, and I know this was beyond stage one, mm -hmm that um, they just don't go away. Yeah. It's, you know, the story presents some really beautiful things, but it also presents some difficult things because I mm. have a friend that had a tumor mm. and we prayed. This, uh, this friend was anointed mm. and there was no healing as far as we could see. Yeah. The tumor didn't disappear. Mm. And um, it seemed like God had not answered, had not intervened. So, so doesn't it raise questions about does God intervene for some people and not others? Do do are miracles um, mm. evident or or not evident? It seems that way, and some people think God is not fair. Oh, right, that He would heal one person yeah. Yeah. and and not heal another. Exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. But first, I, mm. I want to ask the question of what is a miracle? Mm -hmm. And when you told your story, you defined a miracle as what? Well, when people look at miracles, most are looking for a physical miracle. Yeah. And so I'm talking about a physical miracle in this situation. Yes. Mm. Well, we've invited two physicians here with us to talk to us about miracles. On my left is Dr. Deborah Stottlemyre. And to her left is Dr. Sarah Uffendel. Thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. Debbie, let's, I'm going to talk to with you first. Okay. Talk to us about how you define miracle, the concept of miracle. It, I personally believe in miracles. I think I do it a little bit broader than what you said, Lee, mm -hmm. and that I see miracle more as when the supernatural breaks through the natural in any way. So that leaves it open to a fairly wide spectrum of things that you could consider miracle from any event that increases faith through to a physical healing all the way over to the incarnation and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, single momentous miracles in the scope of human history. And for me, the miracles that I find most compelling are the ones where I see I've been changed. You know someone hurts me dreadfully, you know, maliciously, my ability to forgive and move on and have that relationship healed to me. You, you had a story about a patient. Tell us the story about the patient that was healed. I um, have a, had a number of patients with very bad prognoses and one of them, you know, was healed and went forth and praising God, you mm -hmm. know. Other ones weren't healed. And I've seen their journey, some of them um, very bitter, yeah. very angry, mm -hmm. others able to find something about their relationship with God mm -hmm. that made it okay, 
even though they were dying. You know, Carol, a oh, yeah. lot of people, when, when we look at miracles, we don't take it as broad as what you know, Debbie's taken it. Uh -huh. And Debbie's talking about it in the real sense. But a lot of people, when they're in a crisis, they're looking for a physical miracle. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and I wanted to ask you, have you ever had mm -hmm. a patient come to you that considered something a miracle? Let's say, let's just choose something out of the hat. A, a man has congestive heart failure. Mm -hmm. And you prescribe a medication for him, digoxin or something, that you know will help him breathe better. He goes home, he takes the medication, and he comes back and voila, a miracle. And he's praising God for this miracle. But you have a sense that it probably was the medication. So how do you, how do you deal with someone who may call something a miracle mm -hmm. and attribute it to God when you may know that it's actually coming from the medication itself or appears to be? You know, I, the most important thing for me is to affirm that person's faith. Mm -hmm. Isn't it wonderful that God acted mm -hmm. in your life? Isn't it, and I broaden it to, again, mm -hmm. God is our creator. Isn't it wonderful that he's so creative, mm -hmm. he found ways for us mm -hmm. to be able to make people feel better? Mm -hmm. um, that is miraculous, mm -hmm. you know. And someone's so you don't counter the story? I don't counter the story. Okay. I want to do something to affirm their faith in the Creator and, mm -hmm. and, and broaden their understanding of how mm -hmm. God may be able to work in their lives. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, isn't it the person's perspective on whether something is a miracle? I mean, mm -hmm. Joseph could have chosen to believe that Mary wasn't telling the truth when she said, God was with me, mm -hmm. not another man. Mm -hmm. And we can make that, we have to make that same choice today. Mm -hmm. You mean the choice to? To believe whether that miracle was really a miracle or whether it was all just human fabrication. I think a lot of guys in Joseph's situation would really struggle with that. I'm not. I'm Excuse me? <laughs> yeah. What are you telling me? Exactly. Yeah. Wait, who would struggle? A lot of guys and, you know, your, your fiancé says, I'm pregnant. <laughs> And it's not with a man. Now, when you say a lot of guys would struggle, talk to us, what do you mean? Believing. I mean, here's Joseph. God must have touched his heart for him to believe uh -huh. I see. what Mary said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's very unbelievable. Mm -hmm. But he believed it, and it was true. <laughs> well, and isn't it true that mm -hmm. very often mm -hmm. guys and women, too, want to fix things? Mm -hmm. And he wanted to fix it. Remember, he thought about just bye. put her, yeah, <laughs> put her away, and let's let's make it look better. All right. Yes. Uh. I find the the definition being as broad as you're referring to it mm -hmm. difficult because then I just call everything a miracle, and you may say, "Great, good for your faith," but it isn't because it it kind of torments me inside. Um, mm. I feel like I'm then just uh, a happy, witless Christian. Oh, everything's happy, everything's a miracle, and I'm not really thinking. Um, and then when I stop and think, well, was this, was, was this not, then it feels maybe like I'm judging God or, you know, and so I don't, I don't even want to get into that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I back off to the place where I, I think, you know, God has created us. I believe in God. I believe he loves us. But for me, it's easier to believe that life happens and he's not in there, you know, fiddling with everything. I, I find it specifically interesting that you're saying this given your own story. Could you, would you mind addressing your comment that you just made in light of your personal story? Mm. <laughs> okay, I, I had, um, I was diagnosed with cancer about nine years ago. Mm. And um, many people would say I had a miracle in my life because I'm here today. Um, at the beginning, I had many friends praying for me and family. And can we start back at the very beginning just to give them a feel of how weird it was to find out that you had cancer? You, you were going over just to get... I didn't believe it. But, but, but you knew that the um, 
outcome pathology. was a, the pathology was a, a negative report, isn't it? In your heart, you everyone thought it was negative, so you just went over on your break. I took right? a break from rounding in the hospital, and I you and your residency very right. busy, very yes. busy, yes, yes, yeah. and I I took a break, ran mm. over to the the clinic where the surgeon was who had done the biopsy, mm. and he had been very sure too that it was just benign. And so I was in there, and he comes in, and we were chit-chatting, and um, mm. he clearly hadn't looked at the pathology mm. report yet either, because neither of us were concerned about it. And so, yes, the wound looks good, it's healing up nicely, and mm. I said, oh, by the way, did you get the pathology report? He goes, oh, just a minute. And he went to go outside to get it, and the nurse was right there handing it to him. And I saw his face as he looked at it, you know, from a happy, interactive, the color drained out of his face. Mm -hmm. And I said, what? And he just handed me the piece of paper. And, and you and I know, yeah. as physicians, you've never done that. No. Just hand them. Yeah. and and. He but was you knew just so cared. affected. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I knew he cared. Yeah, he yeah. couldn't say it. He could not say it. He was blown out of the water by the sound of it. Right. Yeah. And I, I picked, so I looked at the piece of paper, and I'm, I'm trying to find the words that mean something, and I, I saw carcinoma, and I was looking for the words in front that said no evidence of, mm -hmm. you know, and I couldn't find them. Everything was getting blurred. And I, I said, well, whose is this anyway? Mm -mm. And, and I wasn't trying to be funny or anything. No. It just, uh, I thought it was a mistake. Because you were how old at the time? 32. You don't get breast and cancer I didn't, at 32. I mean, that's what we all think. And I felt it? very mm -hmm. healthy yeah. and very active. Mm. So the discovery of cancer was a huge a shock. Yeah. Can't imagine. I mean, you've, you've gone through all this training and you're in your residency and you're going and mm. <coughs> come to a halt. And uh, mm. it, it was very hard. Mm. And a lot of people were praying for me and mm. praying for a miracle. Yeah. Mm. And I couldn't. I couldn't pray for a miracle. I was okay with everybody else asking for one. But I wasn't going to ask for one. Because? <clears throat> because, what if he said no? Hmm. We're talking about life and death. I'm talking about my life here. And if I go to the, the only person I believe can really help me, the God of the universe, begging for my life, and he says, uh, no. I don't know what I'm going to do with that information. It's going to hurt too deeply. It's going to leave me in a place I don't want to be. So I did the only thing I could was just to ask him to, to make me a better person through it, come with me, but I didn't ask for any outcome. You drew a picture at the time. Will you talk to us about your picture? <clears throat> the picture is of a cat holding a piece of cheese to a mouse who's reaching up for it. And asking God for a miracle in my life, I felt like that mouse just reaching up. But I felt like God was kind of could be toying with me. Maybe you can have it, maybe you can't. Mm. Because he doesn't tell me specifically, how will I know if I really have it? What if it comes back later? You know, then was it, where does that leave me? And so I felt like this, this mouse in a game and I didn't want to play that game. That would be scary. You're trying to figure out, can I reach it? Can I not reach it? Is it going to happen? Am I, is it not going to happen? And so for you, 
rather than asking. What'd you do? I just I just said, come with me, mm -hmm. and and make me a better person through mm -hmm. the experience, mm -hmm. if it if you want to. Mm -hmm. Now, Sarah, some people looking at that, and maybe some people listening, would say, is that a loss of faith not to believe, not to, to have the whatever, to believe that God would do something? Would that maybe be the cause of him not doing something? What, what would you... Yes, I, I heard echoes of that, not directly at me, but um, around me. And we all have to respond how we can inside, you know. And I just knew from previous experiences, I, I couldn't afford to beg for my life and to be just waiting with my life in his hands, just you know, maybe you'll die, maybe you won't. I will, for me, it was more important to accept the possible inevitable and make the best of what I have mm -hmm. and love life to the last drop mm -hmm. and say, I'm okay, you just explain it to me at the end, than to, to be begging for something. Let me mm -hmm. see if I understand. You, you're okay with God, whether He healed you or not. Mm -hmm. So if He healed you, it would be wonderful, but you weren't going to ask. If He didn't mm -hmm. heal you, you knew He's going to be with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you find a lot of people giving you advice? <laughs> 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 could, you, could you share? Uh, <laughs> Drink more water. <laughs> <laughs> Read this book. It's All kinds of advice. Why do people do that? I, I personally, I think it's their own discomfort mm. with what you're going through and their anxiousness to fix it mm. um, and their their anxiousness to believe there is a way to fix it mm. see if you mm. had just exercised mm. more you wouldn't yeah. be in this condition even though I'm Therefore, not exercising I can tell you that right well <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> and that but they true. know the answer that was true with many people wasn't it oh, they yes. weren't exercising they weren't drinking water but they thought you ought to do it mm -hmm. now mm. <laughs> you chose a very specific path because when people are given diagnoses, sometimes they'll choose a natural path, uh, the medical route. You made a decision right up front and you stuck with it as far as I understand through your whole journey. Yeah. What was that decision? Well, as a physician, um, I chose to go with the uh, medical path. Um, it's not that I believe we have all the answers by any means, but I believe that, mm. I believe in things like God gave us brains to use, and in science and in medicine we're figuring things out, and while we don't have all the answers by any means, it's better than somebody randomly choosing a plant to wash all over me that has no basis. And, and so I wanted to give the things that had some scientific basis every chance and so I did the whole thing well and science is something we can trust in to some degree I mean the fact that we can jump up and we don't go floating off means that we can trust gravity Exactly. And, and that's a wonderful thing to know and that's believe. Wonderful. That's a wonderful <laughs> thing. <laughs> or, or the fact that yeah. we can cut our hands and the, the clotting mechanism within our blood will, will mm. come into to play. We mm. trust, for the most of us, mm. that our bodies will respond in ways they were, they're supposed to respond. And aren't those wonderful things well, to trust? I believe, yeah. that's, I trust that God made those God things. God made those things. And yeah. he, he follows the things that he made working with us. This is what happens after you put your head under the guillotine and it falls, what? your head doesn't just miraculously stay attached, it falls off. I mean, there are things that happen. Mm -hmm. There, and there I are think cause and effect safety. issues. Mm -hmm. But now, the, my question is, we could easily then have a distant, remote God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and how, to, how, do we, how do we deal 
with that possibility because if we trust too much in science then God could be a, a dia sort of God that started things in motion, that gave the rules mm -hmm. of operation. And how, how do we... Well, there's keep... a lot of people that believe that way. Right. Mm -hmm. Keep going. So how do we... Well, you had mm -hmm. uh, brought up the idea of Aslan at a, in a previous conversation. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, C.S. Lewis in the Chronicles of Narnia, you know, this, this line, and many of our viewers have seen this story. You probably read the book. Mm -hmm. But um, the comment is made... Aslan cannot be tamed because somebody wanted a miracle. They wanted Aslan to appear. Mm. And he was remote at the time. He wasn't available. Yeah. And the comment was, Aslan cannot be tamed. And I don't think C.S. Lewis meant us to see Aslan as God, but some people draw some sort of um, mm -hmm. connection. And it's like, sometimes God seems remote. So, you, so are you saying, Lee, that sometimes God doesn't always respond as we think he or she should respond? Is that what well, you're you know, saying? There's a sense of entitlement amongst some Christians. And some of this is brought on by, unfortunately, the idea that, you know, you, you're a good person, you go to church, you behave properly, you put the quarter in the slot, and out comes a miracle. There's okay. a sense of entitlement. Oh, God's supposed to work and haven't we all me. heard stories of people saying, the next mm. man that walks in the door, God, I ask for that to be my husband, and <laughs> there, you know, haven't we all heard those kind? Or, <laughs> <a hunchback> we, <laughs> <laughs> or we, we, we put the sign up for the house to sell, and, and, yeah. and asking God that if it's supposed to sell, it'll sell. So, we all kind of look for miracles, but my question for you, Debbie, is mm. have you ever prayed for something that you haven't gotten? Well, yes, but bef before yeah, I answer yeah. that, can I yeah, go back to something sure. that Sarah said, because I was really compelled by your struggle with being afraid to ask the Almighty God for something he might say no to, and that from mm. that you have this, this convincing thing that we are... Um, God only works in the ways he does. And, and maybe you're right. But what if our perspective on God's laws is so narrow that he is acting in ways that we see as miraculous but are within a bigger system that we don't have perspective on? Yeah. I, I would be very happy with that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But it's yeah. true that God sometimes yes. says no. And as a child, um, I prayed desperately that my parents' divorce would not happen. And it did. You know, and I was very angry with God and very, very sad and lonely for many, many years. And I remember specifically being mm. angry at mm. God because in C.S. Lewis's world, mm. Susan and Peter and the children had a touchable God and I didn't. Mm. And I was ah. so angry that my God wasn't there for me. And you were about how old at this time? I was time? about 10, 11. And what did you do at that time with the anger that you needed a touchable God and he wasn't I there. I just endured. You know, I refused to stop believing in God, but I didn't have any answers. I just sat and struggled with it. It took me many years for me to understand and to look back and give God credit for having been in my life through the hands of aunts and uncles and teachers and pastors. Mm -hmm. oh, Debbie, so why God. did you What's stay? Why, why did you struggle though? A lot of people would say, there isn't a God. Bye and move on. I don't know, but I, I choose to believe in the Creator. Mm. So as you look back, God was there. Well, that's what I hear you saying. Yes. God was there. God was there. Just not in a way that you could understand from the perspective of an eight-year-old. Correct. Or a ten-year-old. Um, that's why it's hard. Yes. That's why it's hard, because you have the struggle without the the resolution and that's why this time I chose to say he's not going to get in and fix everything. I'll just choose to believe he's going to let things happen the way nature is going to take mm -hmm. them. But you're still seeing God as a cat, teasing you as a mouse, dangling something that he had the power to give you but arbitrarily wasn't. No, I'm okay with seeing he, that he, there's a much bigger picture that I don't now understand. Now or then? Now. Now. Yeah. yeah. There's a much bigger picture I don't understand. Well, and let's talk about now. What is happening in your story of cancer? 
Well, um, after I first got it, three years later it came back mm -hmm. and um, it was devastating again. But after a few years of treatment, I've been told I don't have cancer now. In the back of my mind, I always think it's there because it never just goes away in mm. my world. Um, mm. And that's okay. That's okay. Whatever happens is okay because mm. live or die, mm -hmm. I know where God is. I know I want to ultimately be with Him, and I'm okay. See, to me, to me, that's the biggest miracle of all, yeah. is that journey that you made from seeing God as a cat to you're okay no matter what happens. You, you made a second drawing. Let's talk about your second drawing. This, <coughs> it's a wonderful art, you have to. <laughs> um, the second drawing is, was the night before I got the results about cancer again. Mm -hmm. Whether I was going to be falling into death and darkness or f falling into light mm -hmm. and healed and um, In fact, you made, this, you made this when I asked you how, what it was like to be on that verge of knowing the results of your, your final test in a way. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what you said to me? Because it I really felt, shocked me. And in retrospect, it shocks me. I felt exhilarated. Yeah. I'm here balancing between life and death, and I don't know which way I'm going to fall. Yeah. And there was a strange rush with that. Mm. Debbie, you have, a, you have something to read to us. I would like to. This is something that has helped me with this struggle because I continue to find it. But, you know, Jesus says we're to ask. And so um, he doesn't all break his promises, but we may not yet be able to understand the way he keeps them. We want to understand. It's difficult to accept we cannot. But if we understood everything, we would have infinite power, and that's not why he came. That is a wonderful note to end on. You've been watching Intersections where Faith, ID, and Life meet. Mm-hmm.